Uh, why don't you just tell us your quote, the quote first, okay? Okay, one of my favorite quotes, um, and it is a very simple one, and I've always, always tried to kind of live my life by it, and I've really always tried to share it with my players and really get them to understand it. It's a very simple quote that I heard uh, that came from John Wooden, either in a book or I heard him talk about it, and that was uh, to try not to get too high and not too low, to take everything as it comes and, and understand what it is, you know, put it at face value and, and don't go overboard, don't get too excited about it and don't get too depressed about it. And for me personally as a coach uh, and a parent and a teacher, that was an important quote for me because when, 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 I, when things did go really well, I always understood, you know, things can turn around and you certainly, you know, you don't want to get too successful or get too full of yourself. And at the same time, when things went bad, it always taught me um, not to not to get too down and understand I could bounce right back up. Now, in turn, transferring that to my players on the, on the field, my students in the classroom, uh, it was something I preached almost daily. Uh, about not getting too high and not getting too low and being even keeled and, and taking all the highs and lows of, of the sport and understanding, you know, take it as it is. It's one play. It's, it's, a, it's a moment in practice. Be able to move on and be able to, to uh, accept what has happened and take it, learn from it, build on it, but, but don't let it fool you into thinking that you've arrived or you're you're a loser or anything like that mm -hmm. and and it really it always inspired me a lot and I know that that uh, it really helped me to stay even keeled and I, I really feel it helped our players stay even keeled very good okay um, I think our next question um, can you talk a little about uh, again um, how the quote applies to the team you have you have addressed that um, has it connected teams people events um, let me see um, it, 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 do you do you have uh, how do you use it to teach kids to be accountable? You know how do you incorporate it into accountability and, and those type of things? Well, I, I think in the accountability side of it, um, it you do see extremes um, in emotions with kids uh, in the sense that that their performance level is affected. Um, usually adversely one way or the other when they begin to get too high or mm -hmm. maybe a little bit full of themselves or, or really down in the dumps. And mm -hmm. I think it's important to, to, to get them to understand that, you know, to stay even keeled, to don't let things drag you down. And, and um, in, in the accountability aspect of it, regardless of what happens, you know, we expect you to bounce back. We expect you to, to be there, to, to, to perform the way you, you practice and the way you conduct yourself. I think in a lot, it's not something necessarily that's tangible, but, but I think at the same time it's something that, that trying to keep kids, you know, to pick them back up or, or knock them down when it's, it's you know, it needs to be. You, when you watch the Petaluma High School football team or a Sacred Heart High School football team, regardless of, of what the score of the game, I think you found kids that played on a consistent uh, you know, high effort level, kids that really laid it out there the entire game. I don't think, I, I think I can proudly say I never have seen a team quit or give up or uh, I think they've always stayed even keeled and and when things have gone well, I think they've handled it well and, and continued to, you know, to perform at a very high level and, and uh, that, that to me is probably what I'm most proud of in, in, in coaching. Do you, do you have a, did you have a team that Kind of, kind of exemplified that. I mean, what I mean by that is, did you have a team that kind of, kind of maybe sticks out in your mind? A group of kids that you know really were, you know, that kept that that good. You know, probably one of your championship teams. I mean, you had a number of them. So yeah, we. You know. I, I would say I had a number. I had a number of teams at Petaluma High that that I felt. Um, I, I guess, for lack of a better word, I, I think overachieved or whatever. We we had a team about five years ago that. Um, when we started the season, in, in our preseason, we went to a, a team camp up at Santa Rosa Junior College, and we played a couple teams that we would meet later in the season, and these teams absolutely annihilated us in this camp. Um, it was no contest, and and um, I I do think that part of the reason that we were annihilated was that that these teams were had done a lot of preparation for this camp, and we hadn't. Uh, 
and I'm not ashamed of that because it, it was summertime, but at, regardless, these teams really took it to us. As a season, and, and, and I, let me back up for a second, when, the, when we left from that camp and came back to school, our kids were really deflated. And, and very down and, and had all these high hopes like every team does and they were just kind of shattered and, and my feeling was we were going to have a tough time building them back up. But along the lines of don't get too high and don't get too low and you're never as bad as you think you are and you're never as good as you think you are, we work hard and, and, and tried to emphasize to them you know, that, that, that we can change the way we feel about ourselves right now. And this team made some good progress, and as the season progressed, we won a couple games early, and uh, they started to regain some confidence. And then in the middle of the season, we played one of those teams. Um, and it was, it was a league opponent, and it, this was a team that had really taken it to us in this camp, and uh, we played them in a, in a critical league game. Um, I think we were tied for first with them at the time, and we beat them. We beat them uh, on a field goal late in the game, and, and uh, our kids were very excited. And um, it was kind of funny because it was fun to say to our kids, I wonder which one of those games were more important, you know, the one at the summer camp or, uh, or the league game that we just played. And then about five weeks later, we played the other team in a playoff game. And um, same thing. This was a, a big Sonoma County school that had really thumped us. Uh, in this camp, and we played him in the playoff game, and we were, you know, by the, uh, according to the, the local newspaper, we were supposed to get thumped again by these guys, and we soundly defeated this team, and our kids were as excited as I've ever seen. I don't know that we necessarily um, outgunned them in talent. I don't think we did, and this team was really a good football team, but we came to play, and our kids were very determined, and I think they looked back on that camp experience and used it to motivate them, and it may have been the exact opposite with the team, with the other team. I think the other team may have looked and thought, oh, we'll, we'll run all over these guys. I know that the team we played in the league, their coach told me that after the game, their kids felt it was going to be an easy win because of what they had done to us in the summer camp. Mm -hmm. And I was really proud of those kids because they, they really took what could have been a really damaging uh, experience into the season and did a good job of not letting it get them down and, and progress to a point where we were really a good football team by the end of the season. Well, that's, that's great. Um, wow. Um, it, it, are there any specific players, Coach, that you mean? Um, I don't want to get too specific here because we're talking about I'm just reading the question. Let, let, let me rephrase that. Um, if a player doesn't seem to be getting it, the, the quote you're talking about, even keeled, maybe he's too high, or, or he's, yeah. maybe more often than not, he's too low on yeah. himself, right? I mean, how, how would you, how, what do you do? Well, that's easier said than done. And mm -hmm. I wish, I'd love to tell you that I, I had, a, you know, all, all success and no failures in that, but it doesn't always play out that way. I, I think it's important to understand that there's a lot of factors involved in, in a kid's uh, emotional disposition and, and that are outside of the football field. So sometimes uh, it's hard to say. But when a kid's down, I think it's important to, to let him know that you're there for him. And to be, I, I found over the years, it isn't necessarily having a good answer, but it's a lot of times it's being a good listener and being able to listen to him and let him vent a little bit and, and talk about it and, and hash it out. And, and a lot of times they do look for the answers. I, I found, you know, the longer I coach, uh, I, I felt like I had a few more answers just because you, you through the nature of the job, you, you gain a lot of experience. But hopefully you can sit down with him and let him know that you care about him as a person. And he's, he's not just a football player to you. He's an individual who hopefully is going to take some of these things and transfer them, you know, for the rest of his life. And, and I, you know, I, I couldn't even begin to, to, to pick one, but I can name hundreds of young men that I've been around that, that have inspired me as much as I've inspired, you know, hopefully inspired them because of the way they've conducted themselves when they played football at, at SH or at Petaluma and what they're doing with their lives now. Very good. Well, that, Coach, that's, that's pretty darn good.